We're back here with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa set for a second discussion this morning. And we have a guest already on standby uh, to do justice to this issue of uh, head of farmer clashes. Um, we'll introduce our guests in a second. But let's quickly give you a background to this discussion. And indeed, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development of Nigeria, Bahamad Abubakar, yesterday said that the incessant conflicts between farmers and headers uh, was threatening food security, not just food security, but also national security in Nigeria. Uh, he spoke in Abuja, the regional summit on human and climate uh, security challenges and farmer header conflict resolution in the livestock sector. Uh, the theme of the summit was uh, promoting peace and climate security in the crop and livestock farming sectors. The minister called on stakeholders uh, to partner with the government to bring lasting solutions to farmers and herders' conflicts in the region. Uh, he also said the summit was aimed at providing an opportunity for a dialogue and discourse between uh, the, uh, the, the sides and, of course, uh, on the way forward to achieving peaceful coexistence between both parties, that's farmers and herders. Now, the minister said the actors, the farmers and herders were the best tool to bring about a solution, a lasting solution uh, to the conflict. I'm glad to say we have uh, joining us this morning to do justice to this particular issue of farmer header conflicts and the federal government's ideas as, um, uh, as, as announced by the Minister of Agriculture, Rural Development, uh, and as to whether they can solve the problem. We have um, Shegun Chopiton, a principal partner, Woodridge and Scott Consulting Lagos. Uh, Shegun, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thanks for having me, Kofi. Good morning, Nigerians. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Um, let's look at what the, uh, the Minister of Agric is saying and as to whether you agree. He says that the, the farmers and the herders, indeed the actors in these conflicts, are the best tool to bring about a lasting solution to the conflicts. Do you agree with him? Um, no, I don't agree. I, I find that quite um, incredible, really. Uh, to, to hear um, such a highly placed government functionary uh, abdicate responsibility publicly, <laughs> um, you know, on, on, on an issue that is this um, uh, important on the national level, you know, I mean, how can, how can you in one breath say this issue um, has an impact on food security and has a heavy impact on national security and then in the same breath you say the solution to the issue to that problem that is impacting food security and national security should be solved by the people that are involved in that issue i mean then why do why, why are you there it's 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 quite um mind-boggling really um the, the parties are in in strife and in conflict with, for the very reason that they have been unable to solve this problem and you know it's an age-old problem it's a problem that will not go away until somebody makes it go away somebody has to do something to make it go away so the minister is basically saying oh you people that are killing each other and you know and as i say this i know that some of the um, the, the farmers in certain regions will be incensed that I'm even daring to say that, that are killing each other, you know, because they feel that they are being slaughtered, you know. So, so for the minister to then say that, oh, you that you are being slaughtered and you that you are slaughtering people, or whatever angle or coloration you want to give the problem, just go sit down together and solve the problem, you know. I mean, isn't that kind of? I'm, I'm trying to be charitable with my choice, choice, choice of words because, you know, it makes no sense to me. The, the reason they are fighting and the reason this is going on is because they don't have a solution. The only solution that they have been able to come up with is to attack each other and kill each other. You know, so how can the minister say this? It's, it's weird. All right. We're also told that the, uh, the federal government is soliciting for the support of the international community, uh, development partners and then Nigeria's allies in addressing the farmer header conflict. You know, uh, also probably in a way also asking for international aid you know, uh, international support to solve this problem. You think that is what Nigeria needs? I mean, look, if um, if you leave uh, issues, all issues to most government functionaries, 
uh, they will take international aid. I'm sure that they will take international aid for helping Nigerians breathe the air that God has given to everyone for free. Uh, it, it's really very, you know, I mean, it's, I, I don't get it. Look, the problem, the problem and the problems have been well chronicled. They have been well analyzed. You know, taken to shreds and bits and pieces in the last, at least in the last 10 years. Not to talk of the attention that this problem has received in the last seven years since the, you know, en en entrance of um, the Buhari administration. Because, you know, the issue escalated significantly in the early part of, of this administration, 20, 2016, 2017, 2018, you know, it really, really escalated, you know. So, so it, it has received a lot of attention, both within government circles, you know, within the media space, um, civil society. There's been all sorts of interventions and analysis on this issue. And I believe that the solutions are very, very clear. It's not to be asking for international aid. International aid to do what precisely? Well, well they're asking for the international aid to, amongst other things, help, you know, uh, recharge. Recharge is the word to the minister now. To help recharge Lake Chad. Because they say Lake Chad is shrinking. And that is a, a major source of this conflict. Because the Lake Chad is drying up. Um, they need it to be restored to its former glory. This is what he said, quote, our desire as a nation is for the restoration of the lake in the sub-region to its former glory by recharging it, uh, by recharging it, and also preventing further shrinkage. This is evident in our various communities, uh, in our various appeals, rather, to the international community, development partners, and other allies to of Nigeria and Africa for assistance, it's, um, it's monetary support to uh, you know make sure the charge comes back uh, to what it was before. I mean, I, I don't think what we need is international aid in terms of funding. I think what we need is international collaboration um, between all of the, the countries that are affected by this issue. Uh, Nigeria Republic, Chad, I think Cameroon, and Nigeria. And then any other country that may have um, maybe the technical um, know-how to, to help with what needs to be done to achieve that objective. So yes, that's, that's a good objective, but um, I'm not sure that funding is the issue. I think that um, if, you, if you need, if you, they believe they need the funding to do this, it's, so be it. Um, it's neither here nor there for me. Um, I, I think that the solution, that definitely will be a part of the solution because we know that one of the things that, are, that, have, that has driven the escalation of this, this age-old problem has been desertification and you know and just climate change and all of the issues around that. Uh, the fact that the Lake Chad has shrunk in volume by almost like eighty percent, obviously has reduced um, you know the uh, available vegetation in that region uh, for grazing and, and all of that. So yes, 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 one can accept that, but not not international aid in terms of funding. I think what we need more than anything is leadership and a, a clear plan, a clear program to achieve that objective with miles, with clear milestones and timelines. So you can say, oh, within the next um, 10, 15, 20 years, we would have achieved this volume of, um, of, um, of, of recharge of that, of that um, body of water. Um, you know, because obviously this is not something that is going to happen overnight. It's not something that can be done in one year, for example. You know, so, so where's the plan? Before you start talking about money, anybody that you, if you've ever gone to look for money from anybody, you know, the first thing they ask you is, what, what, how do you intend to use this money? They'll ask you for a plan. So where's the plan? Why isn't the minister talking about the plan for the recharging? And he's talking about money, international aid. You know, so um, for me, the funding issue is not the problem. The, the real problem is the will and, and, and the know-how um, with regards to solving that problem. You um, know... Yeah. Yep. yeah, this was a sort of a talk shop, you know, but also a way to see how they can, you know, resolve the conflicts. But um, like you've said, where is the plan? Because I'm wondering if the minister says, oh, we need international support to help uh, recharge Lake Chad and, and restore it to its former glory uh, and know that uh, this is a big source of the conflict. You know, it's about uh, increasing population, increasing livestock, uh, you know, human beings and diminishing arable and grazing lands in the northern part of the country 
uh, industrialization, so a negative, so political influence and all that. Um, will these issues solve themselves if uh, we just say, so these are the problems, so, or will the international community, international aid flow to Nigeria by just merely saying, oh, we need it? Um, don't, doesn't he need to, don't they need to do something? I think this is what you're saying. They need to start working towards it. Um, uh, if it's desertification, what are they doing to, to fight desertification? And then, you know, that I think that's what you're saying. Absolutely. I mean, I, I read a book um, uh, recently about um, the, the, the some parts of China. You know, this des desertification thing is not is not unique to, to Nigeria, to Africa. Um, other regions of the world have, have faced this, and not just now, but in the past. And, you know, um, a province in China actually went about, there's something they call the Green Wall. You know, they, 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 they went about, um, uh, they went over a 30-year program to revegetate an entire province province in, in China. Um, I, I think between uh, something like 1970, uh, thereabouts, you know, you, you visit that same region today and you think that you are, you are, you are, you are, you are in a forest, you know, and that place was a desert 30 years ago. There was a very, very clear um, plan that resulted in that, and and the reason they did that was um, uh, as, as a as a as a wealth creation strategy, as a poverty alleviation and wealth creation strategy. They realized that um, a lot of the resources that the people in that region required was not available because of desert, desertification and loss of vegetation. And then they went about a very careful program of. Of, of revegetating and uh, you know reforesting those places and and today you know that plan has been implemented you know so that's that's what we need to see from the Nigerian government like where is the coherent very well thought through very well structured implementable plan to solving the farmer herder crisis it's not just about talking it's not about um, you know sound bites that we receive every now and then especially when there's a new incident somewhere then somebody in government will come up and, and say a few nice sounding to them things. Um, it's about sitting down and, you know, orchestrating a, a plan, a very well put together plan over a, 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 an achievable timeline to, right. to solve this problem. This problem is not intractable. We just need somebody to sit down and put a plan together and implement it. All right. Uh, I mean, it, it seems for, to me the, the minister and uh, he's a uh, minister of agriculture and rural development is just saying these are the problems. These are the problems. We need to do this. We need to do that. But you are in government. So you are the one to do it. So why you say we need to uh, develop arable lands? We need to fight desertification. We need to recharge the lake. When you are in government, it's your duty to, to solve these problems. So why are you telling us? Uh, we, just the last question before you go. A lot of the farmers have been sacked from their farms. Those who have not been sacked are afraid to go to the farm because of these conflicts. Um, some whole, some in some cases, whole villages have been sacked. They've driven the villagers away and taken over uh, the land. So those who are still there, they wake up in the morning and their crops have been eaten by cows. Um, uh, what can be done in the short term to medium term to solve Nigeria's food insecurity, which is already staring us in the face because of this uh, crisis, apart from even the floods? Uh, that uh, has, uh, just recently ended. And to be honest with you, Kofi, you know we've, we've had this conversation a number of times on different platforms, and I, I tell you, um, there are no short-term fixes for food food insecurity um, because you know you don't manufacture these things, you don't manufacture rice, you don't manufacture um, um, yams, you don't manufacture tomatoes, you grow them. And they have a gestation period that some of them is six months, some is one year. You know, there's some, some is an annual cycle, some have um, a, a, a biannual cycle where you can have to harvest in a year. You know, so uh, for some other types of crops, it's four cycles in a year. Um, so these are not things that you can just solve if you have a, if a food insecurity um, a threat is looming. It's because things have happened last year that is reducing your harvest this year. So I'm not sure that there is a short-term solution. I think what government simply needs to do is to tackle this issue head on and solve it once and for all. And you know, it still comes down to the will and the sincerity of purpose from government. Nobody, nowhere in the developed world, you know, the places that we would like to be like, 
uh, do you have people carrying cows, cattle, um, through forests, you know, in, to looking for grazing pastures and then destroying and rampaging through people's property in the process. Nobody does that anymore. We're not in the Stone Ages anymore. The government needs to come up with a proper ranching um, right. template. Shagu, th thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. I was just prompted by uh, producers that we, we have to go, so sorry to interject there. I uh, really appreciate your time and, of course, your expert analysis, as always. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you very much. And that has been uh, Shagun Shopiton, principal partner Woodbridge, or Woodridge, rather, and Scott Consulting Lagos. And uh, that's the size of our package. I hope you enjoyed the show. And please be reminded you can follow us on social media, Search for Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, in YouTube, we also have a second YouTube account, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. From all of us here at our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos, my name is Kofi Bartels. See you tomorrow.